Welcome to the Actors Room. This is Jeff Tarowski, episode 119. This week, I give my take on the show called Dirty John, the Betty Broderick Story. And then I'll give my opinion on the case. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this episode of the Actors Room. Here we go. Betty Broderick committed double murder on November 5th, 1989 in San Diego, California. She decided her best course of action was to hop into her Suburban on the early Sunday morning, drive up to her ex-husband's house, creep up the stairs to his bedroom where he was sleeping alongside his new wife, Linda, and Betty pulled the trigger five times, emptying the barrel shooting and killing Dan and his new wife, splattering Linda's brain all over the bed, shooting Dan, Dan falling off the bed, writhing in pain, confusion, bleeding from his ear, his head, his mouth. Betty pulled the phone out of the wall so Dan couldn't call for help. This was premeditated, And done with malice. With hate. She wanted both of them to die that night. It's said that Dan might have been choking on his own blood for up to a half hour. Think about the brutality of this act. But was it justified? Did Dan and his new wife Linda put Betty through hell? Up into this very day. I'll give my opinion on that. And then I'm going to talk about the show itself. Dirty John. The Betty Broderick story. So let's get into that. Right now. This is the actors room. My name's Jeff. We talk about actors. We talk about film. And sometimes we talk about docs. Today we talk about a show. Dirty John. Always support my show, The Actors Room. Go on to my Facebook page. Go to my website. I have a YouTube channel. Click like. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on my iTunes account. I greatly appreciate it. And please comment if you can. It really helps the show. It boosts it up. Makes it more popular. More people listen. And get my take on things. Hopefully... uh, Those of you who search out shows like mine, uh, looking for someone else's opinion on something you watched or something you're passionate about. I'm very passionate about this story. There are certain stories I just can't help myself. I go down to rabbit holes and I find out all I can and try to make, have it make sense to me. And hopefully it makes sense to you too. Let's talk about the show. Christian Slater. Mr. Christian Slater. What do you think about him as an actor? He's been around a long time. Been doing it since he was a kid. I think he's pretty damn good at it. 
He may not be classified as the top-notch actor, but people like to watch him act. And I'm so glad he continues to work and do good work. This was good work by Christian Slater. From what I heard, his portrayal of Dan was pretty good. Um, pretty realistic. There was a show put on in the 80s about this story. Or I'm sorry, the early 90s with Meredith Baxter. A woman scorned. I watched it. Boy, Meredith Baxter is a great actress. And she was on Family Ties. She played the mom. She's a fantastic actress. She nailed Betty Broderick. Meredith uh, is not a fan of Betty. She did her research on Betty. And came to the conclusion that Betty is where she belongs. In prison. And it's my opinion that if you put Meredith Baxter (laughs) as Betty with Christian Slater as Dan, that would work out pretty well. Just because of the realism. I think that Amanda Peet did a phenomenal job in the current show, Dirty John. Uh, Fabulous. She went through the ringer. She was very emotional, very believable. And you like Betty through Amanda Peet's eyes. Meredith Baxter, on on the other hand, decades ago, did the same role. Put a different spin on Betty. Not as likable. But I think a little more real. Which performance do you prefer? I prefer Meredith. For the realism factor. Not saying that Amanda Peet did a bad job. She didn't. I believed her. And those who know Dirty John, the show, and are getting all of your information from just that show, please don't. Although there's certain things in there that are true, no doubt about it. There are a lot of things left out of the show. Very common. You can't put everything in a show. Just can't do it. So, let's talk about what the hell happened to this family. This family on the rise. Dan Broderick was brilliant. Smart as you can be. He not only had a law degree. But he had a medical degree too. Your dream guy. Am I right ladies? He was a doctor and a lawyer. That is extremely rare. Let's talk about. Dan and Betty in the early years, how they met, what happened there, and then the beginning of their journey, their marriage. We're going to talk about them personally, what they're like before all the shit went down. So let's start with Betty. (laughs) Betty grew up in a family that was pretty close Her dad loved having people over on Sundays, big dinners, manja, everybody eat, eat more, a close family, very Catholic, very deep rooted in ethics. Betty grew up knowing that her sole purpose in life was to get married, have children and support her husband. Have grandkids. Do what you got to do to make your home a happy, loving place. She wasn't encouraged to be her own person. Her parents were very strict with her. Betty was very pretty. I looked up her yearbook on classmates.com. It's there. Her junior year, I believe. Looked up her yearbook. She was very, very pretty. And soon enough, boys were knocking down her door. Her parents, of course, didn't like this. (laughs) Shoo them away, they said. Although Betty's parents did support their kids uh, and, and have a good home for Betty, Betty was also sort of alone on certain aspects of her life, uh, alone to figure stuff out on her own. For instance, when she reached puberty and had her first... You know, woman experience. 
She bled, didn't know what was going on. And her mom really didn't help her out. She gave her a tampon and didn't tell her what to do with it. That's a mom that really doesn't want to be involved in their kid's uh, struggle, her confusion. It's a confusing time for anybody. It goes to show you what kind of atmosphere Betty grew up in. Not an unhappy home, but missing pieces here and there. And goes to show you just what is the makeup of Betty Broderick and what may come of her in the future. How she handles certain situations. What she was told to do in marriage by her parents, by her family. She really did look forward to getting the hell out of her house. And that's a good thing. No matter how wonderful your home life is as a a kid, you should always want at a certain point, I would say late teens, early 20s, to go out and make your own life. Be your own person. Find out who you are. And that's what Betty wanted to do. She went to college. She studied to be a teacher. Betty's very smart, by the way. I know Dan is brilliant, genius level. Uh, Betty is no slouch. She knows that she has a sharp mind. But where she may lack is certain common sense attributes. I find this to be very interesting about people in general. No matter how smart you are, book-wise, doesn't mean you know right from wrong in other areas of life. Brilliance in the mind does not mean common sense is high on your list. And I find that so incredibly interesting. (laughs) Because there are a lot of people too that may not be book smart, but are grounded in common sense and make good life decisions, good family decisions. Being both, God bless you. If you have both, you are just blessed beyond belief. (laughs) So let's get back to the story. Betty's in college, doing okay, getting away from the family, spreading her wings. She's obviously going to meet a lot of guys. She's very attractive. She's pretty. She's blonde. She goes to a college party in South Bend. Jerry Lee Lewis is actually performing in this bar. And she has a young man sitting across from her. He's a little dorky. He's got glasses on. And I'm looking at Dan Broderick as a young man, and he looks like Harry Potter. Harry Potter is kind of dorky, but cute. And that's what Dan was. He approached Betty that day, that night. Was very interested in knowing more about her. Wrote his name on a napkin. And put his name, Dan Broderick III, MDA. Betty was interested in why he put MDA. And asked him, what does that mean? MDA. And Dan said slyly, medical doctor almost. Dan was very hopeful and proud that he was going to be a doctor. And who wouldn't be? And Dan used that uh, uh, pickup line, that approach. I'm cute, but I'm going to be a doctor too. I'm a good catch. (laughs) And I'm going to be really honest with you here. Uh, Betty was impressed by that. The fact that he was going to be a doctor. Check mark. (laughs) And that's a big check mark for any young lady. Uh, Looking for some sort of relationship with the future. A future of having decent money coming your way. Decent money meaning you're going to have a nice house in a nice area of town. And you can have as many kids as you want. You can have cars paid for. uh, Vacations every year. A second home. But, but, it's not going to be there right from the start. You have to sacrifice together in the beginning. Even if you're going to be a doctor. Even if you're going to be a lawyer. The money doesn't come right away. You struggle at first. These two kids knew that. Dan kept it Betty. Betty was hesitant with Dan. She didn't quite know if she liked him that much yet. And will Betty ever truly love Dan Broderick? Is this a question you ask yourself? Those of you who know this case, the story. Do you feel that Betty really truly loved Dan? 
Because I'm going to point out certain things that happened in their marriage later on that make me believe that she really truly didn't love Dan. I think she loved the idea of loving him, but did she really give her heart to Dan? She gave her heart to the marriage. She gave her heart, for the most part, to her kids. But did she give her heart to Dan? Dan's family, the Brodericks, they liked uh, Betty from the start, right away. Betty was uh, huge. She was bubbly. She was very talkative. She was a nice person, and she got things done, too. Like She helped out doing things for the families. Very active. She liked to prepare parties, things like that. Involved. On the other hand, Betty's family, especially her mother, had question marks regarding Dan. She was iffy about Dan. Especially at their wedding. Betty's mom sort of stuck her nose in the wedding plans, how it was going to go, all that stuff that happens. It's not a bad thing. It's a mom being very excited about her daughter's wedding. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Betty's mom sort, sort of put her hands into it. Told people what to bring and what to wear and how to wear it. Dan wasn't having it. (laughs) Dan dressed himself the way he wanted to be dressed that day. Hey, it's his wedding, right? It's, It's his call too. Betty's mom didn't like that. She felt Dan to be very selfish. And I think Dan was selfish. (laughs) Sometimes you have to be selfish about certain things in your life. It's okay to be selfish about your wedding and what you wear. But a little sneak peek into the relationship between Betty's family and Dan. Iffy. Not bad. Not good either. I think this will play into how Betty also feels about Dan from the very start. Knowing that her family, maybe just her mom, isn't warming up to Dan... She somehow has to prove how great he is, but always in the back of her mind, being questionable about the whole thing, the whole marriage. Did I do the right thing? Am I marrying the right guy? His future's bright. There's no doubt about it. But will I be happy with him? Is he the man for me? Am I the woman for him? And Dan has the same thoughts as well. Mind you, this is the 60s. And Dan and Betty didn't live together before marriage. That's the way it went most of the time back then. My parents did that. You get to know who they truly are after you get married. And it has been reported, and I found out, Dan was questionable about the marriage from the get-go. From the very start, same as Betty. And I don't know if this is true. Dan says on their honeymoon, he remembers sitting on a bus going somewhere with Betty, looking out the window and thinking, what did I just do? Damn. (laughs) Damn it, Dan. But I hope that's not true. I hope that story is not true. Being on your honeymoon and thinking, what did I do? That's a hell of a thought. So maybe that goes to explain right off the bat. Are these two doomed already? And I think they are. If you're thinking from the very beginning it's not going to work, that's a bad start. Chances are you're going to be walking through this marriage on shaky ground forever. And you know, maybe just maybe in time when things go the right way for you, that you will find love and be content with the marriage and it works. And that's always possible. So I think Dan and Betty went with that. <laughs> They went, they went with that idea. That's what I think. Because the beginning of their marriage was fine. They struggled mightily. Dan, finishing up his medical degree. Uh, Betty, wanting to please Dan. Working to support him. Getting pregnant a lot. A lot. Uh, Betty had some medical issues with having kids. Uh Carrying the child, those nine months, was a hard time for Betty. She was very sick almost the entire pregnancy, getting, you know, throwing up a lot, bleeding a lot. 
So being pregnant was really hard on her. But something that Dan wanted. Dan wanted a big family. That meant a lot to Dan. And Betty was there to uh, supply that for Dan. Dan wanted a lot of kids. and, And Betty did too. But being pregnant and in pain all the time wears on you. Plus the way she supported Dan during this time. Working two, three jobs. As Dan's going to school. As Dan is working at other hospitals to gain his medical degree. They went through some rough times. And a big reason why a lot of people out there, including probably you listening right now, justify what Betty did because she went through the shit with Dan in the beginning. They did it together. She sacrificed her life at that time so Dan could be successful in the future. Now, mind you, they were successful Because they worked together and they did it as a unit and they were together as a unit successfully. But Betty really did sacrifice a lot. A lot. And that pisses an individual off. Knowing that you were there in the beginning during the shit. And then someone else (laughs) down the road just, just jumps in your space, in your spot, in your role. And reaps all the benefits. Because Dan eventually divorces Betty and remarries his secretary. Dan, you fucking son of a bitch. I hate cheaters. I hate cheaters. Betty, the burning passion, I get it. I I would be like the flames in my soul, in my being... Uh, Would definitely just flare up beyond measures. I would explode with anger too, Betty. Right? Right? But there's no way I would ever, I hope, murder. I don't think I would be that upset. Mind you, I might throw something. Betty threw a lot of shit. I would throw some shit. And then I would move on with my life. Betty never did. Let's get back to the beginning of their marriage. Dan finally gets his medical degree. Great. He's going to be a doctor. Wonderful. (laughs) So he's a doctor for a few months. Comes back to Betty. Says, Betty, I don't want to be a doctor. She says, I'm sorry. What? I decided that the best thing to do is to become a lawyer. Betty thinks, uh, Dan, uh, I really sacrificed a lot for you these past few years. Okay, Working three, four jobs, popping out kids, uh, bleeding all over the place, throwing up all over the place, supporting you. And for the most part, didn't really complain. And you're telling me that was all for nothing? And you really want to be a lawyer instead? How much longer is this going to take? I'm sure she asked these questions. Any sane person would. Dan, I would say, Dan, I love you. Dan, I love you. You're a doctor. Let's move on with our lives. (laughs) Betty didn't do that. She supported her husband. I give props, big props to Betty here. Big props for supporting her husband. He wanted to be happy and thought that being a lawyer would make him happy. And he told Betty, not only will I be happier, but I'm going to make more money. Don't you want that for our family? And of course she did. What's she going to say? No, Dan, I don't want you to make a lot of money. Therefore, I don't want to make a lot of money. Ah, Dan, let's make a lot of money. So she suffered. For four more years, Dan was actually accepted to Harvard Law School. Good for you, Dan. Harvard Law. This guy's no moron. He's going to be making a lot of money. And he's going to be making a lot of money as soon as he gets out of Harvard. The connections you make, it's just a wonderful thing if you can do it and get through it. Dan felt that appearance was important. And though they didn't have money at all, scrimping, Danny and Betty decided that looking the part was more important sometimes than having heat in the house. They didn't have a house. They had a shitty apartment in Boston. Betty says there were many nights in the dead of winter. They had no heat. And she would cuddle 
with her babies and was afraid that one of her kids would freeze to death. She might be exaggerating, but if I'm in the dead of winter here in Cleveland, in Boston and Cleveland, have very similar uh, winters. And we didn't have heat, and we didn't at one point. We didn't pay our bill. We had rough times too. I was so embarrassed by that too. Getting that call, we're shutting off your heat. They called me on a Friday and said, we're shutting off your heat. I'm like, oh shit, I'm writing the check right now. Or, you know, can we just put it into the account right now? They said, no, you got to wait till Monday. It's like they did it on purpose to teach me a lesson. (laughs) To teach my family a lesson too, maybe. Pay us. Pay us on time. Don't ever not pay us. We spent the weekend pretty cold that winter. Betty says that happened to her too. With kids, young kids. She went through it with Dan. Because she knew it would pay off eventually. Dan's brilliant. We're going to live well. There's a reason why this is happening. She bit her lip. She did the wife thing. Still, you know, pregnant all the time. It seemed to me. (laughs) Uh, They went to the doctors and the doctors told them, Betty, Dan, if you have sex, you're going to get pregnant. And Dan, being this big Catholic, decided we'll never use a contraceptive, ever. And that's what Catholics believe. You have sex to have kids. And Betty would go through so much pain. She told Dan, "Uh, maybe I should get myself fixed. I can't. It hurts me. I mean, it hurts me to have kids. She's thinking sex equals kids and pain. So, of course, she would get pregnant. And she would ask Dan, I don't want to be pregnant right now. They have like three kids already, two, three kids. And she asked Dan if it'd be okay if she had an abortion. You know how I feel about abortion. Um, I understand it's a woman's choice. I get it. Uh, My stance on it is I, I think it's wrong, but that's just my opinion. Dan felt the same way about abortion. And cried and, and, and said, Betty, no. At one point, she did convince him. And he drove her to the clinic. And sitting in the car, right before she got out of the car, to have the procedure. Dan cried again and begged her not to do it. And so she accepted this from Dan. They turned the car around and went home. Touchy subjects in these life experiences that these two went through. Let's get to that. A marriage is a bond. The things that both of them experienced together, young in their lives, young in their marriages, makes me think about my wife and I. We're doing okay now. We're in our 40s. But it took us about that long to finally be where it's a bit comfortable. Okay, We're getting to that point in our lives where we can go, whew. A little bit. (laughs) But in the beginning, it's hard for most couples. You struggle financially. Your first place is a dump. (laughs) I live we lived in New York, man. It was not in the best place. It was in Queens. It wasn't the best neighborhood. I mean, we were okay. I felt pretty safe in New York City in the late nineties. My wife did too. But it's like we weren't living in the suburbs. And same with Betty and Dan at Harvard. Not the best place in the Boston area. But they did it because they had to. They went through it together. That's my point. And I think a lot of you out there get that. They, a lot of people understand that. And although in the future, Dan becomes filthy rich. <laughs> he will. Um the beginning, they were not rich. Betty said a sort of held that in a good light. Where Dan didn't. Betty was proud to tell people later on that they were on food stamps. And Dan would be like, Betty, don't tell people that anymore. Okay. People don't need to know about our past. So does that a little inside information about Dan and Betty? Uh, Their backgrounds, their early marriage, uh, what they had to deal with in their marriage. Working as a team. And I think they did work as a team. 
I hope everybody out there is following me okay on this story. I think I'm doing okay as we continue. Success is right around the corner. Dan knows it. Betty knows it. They visited San Diego at one point early on, fell in love with the area, and decided if there was any city they wanted to live in to raise a family, it would be San Diego. Dan felt there's got to be a fucking law firm around here somewhere. I'm going to get a job somewhere. And he did. Almost right away. They wined and dined him. They wanted him bad. They got him. And Dan made a little bit to decent money in the beginning. That's very common. Even if you're a lawyer. They want to see what you got. They want to see your fire. They want to see your dedication to the firm. That's what Dan did. Dan put his nose to the grindstone and he did it with style. He always kept up that appearance too. That was something about Dan. It was all show. He had to look good. He had to look the part. The part of a successful lawyer. Betty encouraged this. But... Also felt Dan to be silly with the outfits he'd pick. With how he wore his hair. Simply, Betty really didn't like the way Dan looked. And I find this interesting. She would tell not only his family and her family, but friends as well. How she didn't care about Dan's looks. Ooh. What's that? Listeners out there, what do you feel about that? A wife picking on her husband. And once again, a parallel between Shanann Watts and Chris Watts. Shanann dogged on Chris. Little Chrissy boy. And if you know that story, the Watts story. (laughs) She treated Chris badly. I think Betty, pretty similar here. I don't think Betty treated Dan that well, especially in the beginning of their marriage. I don't know how Dan was treating Betty, though. From what I get, Dan, his sole purpose, his sole goal was to be a successful lawyer. That was it. That was number one, number two, and number three on his list. Being a lawyer, being a lawyer, and being a lawyer. He, I don't want to say ignored Betty, but she was not first on his list. And in a marriage, although he's going to be a lawyer, and that's a sacrifice any family has to make, they're busy people. They make a lot of money, but they earn their keep. They earn their paycheck. They not only have to do well at the office, okay, They also have to wine and dine clients. They also have to have this nucleus, this center of activity with their co-workers, other lawyers. Create binds, bonds. Hang out at the bar. That's what Dan did. He hung out a lot at the bar. Drinking. Carousing. Is that a word? Carousing? Carousing. (laughs) Let's just put it this way. Dan did his part. He covered all the bases. In making a lot of money as a lawyer. He had a good reputation. And he joked around with his co-workers. He was serious when he had to be. But then he played at the bar. Got silly. Let it out. Loosed. You know, because you're working so hard as a lawyer. You got to sort of let it go at the bar. Betty hated this. (laughs) Most wives would. I mean, I get it, Betty. I do. I think Dan was at the bar too much. I think that as a lawyer, you have to do that stuff. My dad did that stuff. My dad wasn't a lawyer, but he was a very successful salesman. He had a product, and he'd be gone a lot, my dad, during the week. Conferences, whining and dining clients. That's part of the job. You got a nine to five, and then you have after hours. (laughs) Okay. And though my dad had to do that stuff, he was also home with us too. I don't think Dan had a balance that suited Betty, that suited the kids. She felt Dan was missing out, not only on the kids and home life, but her. Resentment starts to happen 
very normal thing. And once that resentment happens and Dan doesn't correct it, I think a lot of guys have this problem in a marriage. I, I'm just guessing. I think some men, if not a lot of them, are fearful of confrontations and don't want to let the wife know or to sort of console the wife and let her know everything's going to be okay. They missed the boat somewhere. I felt Dan missed the boat big time with Betty somewhere in their marriage. She resented him. He was out too much drinking. And that upset her and the family and her vision of the future. Dan would eventually get some nice raises. And the family was able to move into a nice house in La Jolla. I've looked it up on Zillow. Decent house. Not bad. It looks like about 3,000 square footage. Very comfortable. And for San Diego area, it's pretty good. Now, mind you, Dan wasn't making a lot of money yet. But he was making an impact on creating a good reputation on his way to making the big bucks. They got comfortable in that home. They made it a family home. Uh, Dan and Betty at this time worked together as a unit also with money. Uh, Betty really wasn't spending a lot of money yet. They weren't in the money yet. But the marriage is not going well. And like I said before, resentment from Betty. Dan too focused on his work. Not giving Betty, the kids, and the home the right attention. Dan was there to cut the lawn, yes. And for the most part on the weekends, he was around, but not. Distant. Were there things going on within Dan that saw in the future a breakup of the family? Did Betty feel it at that time? Because Betty from almost the very beginning of their marriage, threatened divorce often. It was just sort of when they fought. She would say, well, eventually, we're just going to get a divorce anyway. She would even tell the kids that. Your father and I, around the corner, divorce, be prepared. Imagine your kids hearing that. Did Betty mean it, though? Was it just something she said to rile Dan up, to scare him? Try to see if you could do better than me, Dan. (laughs) I'm hot. I support you. I'm a good mom. And she was. Betty was a good mom. My research tells me that. She loved kids. She was a teacher. She taught third grade from time to time, enjoyed it, and loved having kids around. She was good with her kids in the beginning. No doubt. Throwing parties a lot, letting the kids just trash the house. Betty didn't care. She just wanted the kids to have fun, to have a a nice childhood. But their dad, she felt, wasn't around enough. So Dan would hear this a lot. You're not home enough, Dan. Dan would come home late from the bar. She would lock him out. (laughs) You hear about that. It never happened to me. I come home at a decent time uh, if I go out. I used to. Not really anymore. I don't go to the bar. Just I used to every Tuesday. And every Tuesday, I'd be home by 11-ish. I work the next day. Some of these guys, they stay out late. And maybe late for Betty was around 11 midnight. I mean, he worked all day. He didn't come home until then. She's like, she probably warned him, Dan, you do that again, I'm locking you out. And so she did. She would even block off the garage door, I guess. He'd have to sleep in his car. Get away. Good job, Betty. Good for you. Good for Betty. Listen, I'm with Betty on this one. I am. Okay? I am. If you do it every now and then, hey, I get it. You know, Dan wants to go out with the boys, you know, like I did every Tuesday. I think Betty would have been fine with that. I do. I think most wives, significant others, okay, doesn't matter the gender. Guys, if your wife goes out. You're okay with it if she does it every now and then, once a week, whatever. It's just a part of sort of getting away. Uh, You work hard just to get away and have a drink or two and socialize. But I don't think that was the case with the Brodericks here. I think Dan was out a lot. Too much. Betty was turned off by this big time. 
So like I said, Dan's hearing about it often. A lot. Could be daily. Betty was on his case. Dan, I respect you in your career. And she should. He's on his way. Money keeps coming in. His paycheck getting bigger by the year. Like it should. And Betty actually convincing him at one point that the firm he was at wasn't paying him properly. And he should get his own firm. Break out on your own, Dan. I believe in you. And Dan felt this to be a good idea. Break out in his own. Have his own firm. They worked together on this. Betty was proud of the fact that she convinced him to do this. She had faith in Dan. He wasn't making the money he deserved. He has a, a doctorate degree and a lawyer degree. He should be making millions, right? Or on his way. They worked on his office together. Betty picked out everything. And she was happy about this. They got close. He wasn't out with the guys. He was with her. uh, Getting things ready for the new office. Like it was a project they did together. And that's important for a married couple. Doing things together. I'm so proud that my wife and I. We work on projects together. And mind you, there's a few times we, you know, we yell at you, hey, what? The, I'm doing the best I can. You know, that sort of shit. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. What the hell are you doing? But when we do a project together, for the most part, we work well together. And then when it's done, we step back because we did a pretty decent job and we feel proud. We did it together. That's what Dan and, and Betty did here. They got his New office together. Uh, Little things like picking out the right plants. Putting up the wallpaper. Picking the right chairs to sit in. Plus his wardrobe. Betty picked out his expensive wardrobe. Dan was getting nervous. (laughs) Because they charged everything. And you and I both know. Once you get to that point where you're ripping out the credit cards. And you're using every single one of them. You know. uh, Nearly going to the limit. Makes you nervous. Even though Dan knew that I'm a lawyer and we'll get it back. It still makes you, you know. uh. But Betty was there for him. Saying, Dan, we're going to get it all back and then some. We're going to do this together. So at this time, Dan, although pissing Betty off on a regular basis. And the other way around too. When you are just hounded every day. Told that you're a dork. Okay. I guess... Betty would tell her friends that she felt Dan looked gay. Hey, uh, no uh, straight man wants to be called that because if you're not gay, you're not gay. Uh, Being a manly man, right? You don't want to be called that. Betty would call Dan gay. So that's a good example of Dan also having these feelings towards Betty that aren't always positive. I mean... (laughs) That's the way the marriage was going. But this new business, you know, a new attitude. Dan, being away from that other law firm, away from those other lawyers, taking him out all the time. Betty felt reassured. Reassured. I do that. What is that? (laughs) The actor's room has bloopers in the show. If I don't cut it out. If I cut it out, you won't hear this. If I don't cut it out, you're hearing it. In the actor's room, I make mistakes. Anyway, Dan's hearing it. Betty's hearing it. New start. Will it go well? Folks, at first it does. But you and I both know. This is not a happy ending. No, 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 no. Dan is successful. No shit. He gets to the point where he's making around $3 million a year. And this is the mid-80s, by the way. Not too shabby, Dan. He's good at what he does. A mel practice lawyer. The money's rolling in, right? Betty can now spend money pretty much at will. <laughs> You know, she's, she's involved. She throws parties. I hear she in the area 
gave the greatest parties. She's intelligent. She's crafty. She's a great cook, too. She's part Italian. She can cook. Now, I'm not saying other (laughs) nationalities can't cook because they can, but I have a soft spot in my heart. Italian cooking. I'm going next weekend. To, I got reservations next weekend to one of my favorite Italian places. Can't wait. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I made the reservations today. I was like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> so she could cook. She's a good mom. She's got problems with Dan, but they're going to get through this, right? She's threatening divorce a lot, but that's just Betty, right? That's just her style. She calls him gay every now and then. Hey, got to keep him in line. Right, Betty? (laughs) You got to bring Dan down a few notches. Am I right? Dan's a little arrogant. He's a doctor and a lawyer. You know what? I see. Hey, you know what? You know what? Hey, (laughs) if anybody on the planet is going to be cocky, it's going to be somebody that has a doctorate and a law degree. I tell you, can you dispute that? Really? The guy's bringing home millions each year, okay? He's got a a beautiful wife, kids. He looks like he's got his shit together. He could do whatever he wants. I mean, who's going to stop him? (laughs) What, his wife? No, no. His kids? He loves his kids. He does. Dan loved his kids. But his business was more important. Dan knew it. So did Betty. Shit started to go down, folks. We're going to talk about all that shit. Oh, and there's a lot of shit. I set it up this week. I hope you enjoyed the setup. If you're new to my show, I will go on tangents. I hope that's okay. I hope to stray not too far away. I will get myself back on track. But you're listening to this because you're interested in the story and want someone else's opinion. So I hope you enjoy that aspect of my show. Because next week, hopefully next week, I'm going to give my take on how I felt about the show. And I touched on that a little bit. We'll get more into that too. Christian Slater, Amanda Peet, and the other show that they did in the 80s. I'm sorry, the 90s. I'm going to say the 80s. It's probably because I loved the 80s. I was a kid in the 80s, and I loved the 80s. I think back, I'm, I was listening to 80s songs today as I was cleaning and doing laundry. I love the 80s feel. All this shit went down in the 80s. So it's an 80s story. <laughs> I watched the court case. It, you could watch every single second of the courtroom drama on court TV. And that's what I've been doing. I'm almost done with it. Fascinating as can be. You can also, there's a couple of books out there you can read. I'm right in the middle of a book written about the case. It's really good. Very good. I'm right in the middle of that too. Finding out things that are not in the movies, (laughs) not in shows, not in docs. Fascinating. We'll talk more about it. Get familiar with the case if you don't know what I'm talking about. You will be enthralled by it because it's about relationship. Most of us are in a marriage and it's not going to be all roses. Okay. And I even talked to my wife about this case and she was sort of interested in it. Most of the time she doesn't give a shit. She's like, Jeff, what are you obsessed about now? I tell her about it. She's like, whatever. (laughs) But this one, she was like asking questions about it. The next day and the day after, we go for walks and we'd like talked about it, this case. I love that. So hopefully, if you don't know about it, look it up. Watch the show, Dirty John. Because next week, we'll get more into that and more about how I feel about what happened. Betty murdered Dan in cold freaking blood. And she enjoyed it. Just like Chris Watts enjoyed killing his wife and kids. Douchebag. And I laugh because I'm nervous, by the way. I've been getting a lot of slack with comments about the fact that I'm talking about these sensitive subjects and I'll chuckle. It's a nervous thing. I don't mean to laugh. I'm not making fun of it. That's just the way I talk. How I deal with shit. 
<laughs> so, you know, whatever. Get yourself sort of, if you like this topic, just watch the show on Netflix with Christian Slater, Amanda Peet. Really good. I think you'll be involved. You're going to watch this show and, you know, oh, you know, oh, oh. it's going to touch a nerve with you. Guaranteed. If you don't feel something watching that show or watching the movie done in the 90s with Meredith Baxter, that doesn't touch you in some way. I don't You don't understand relationships, marriage at all. That union. And when a union just freaking falls apart, <laughs> crumbles, and it ends up in murder, it's interesting to find out what the hell happened. We'll talk more about it next week. I hope everybody out there is having a great day. I hope you have a great night. I hope everybody is feeling good. For us here in Cleveland, we're right in the middle of summer. Actually, near the end. It's August here. The summers always go by so fast. So I hope you enjoy your holidays, vacations, things like that. Enjoy life. The Actors Room likes to highlight specific actors, yes, shows, movies, but also documentaries and fascinating stories. I want my audience to not only appreciate art, but just to appreciate human nature, relationships. My fav- one of my favorite artists ever is John Cassavetes. And he concentrated on realism within relationships. That fascinated him. That's real life, man. I like to get into that stuff. All that fake stuff, I'm not a big fan of. That's why I don't get into that superhero shit. Some of them I liked because I was a kid and I watched it then. But if you were to say, hey, do you want to watch you know, the newest Superman or the newest Marvel movie? Or do you want to watch a, you know, an independent movie? You know which one I'm going to pick. The independent movie. And that's what I've been doing lately. I love them. And even though all, all of them are not great. I respect the fact that people go above and beyond, do it on their own for the most part, and do something meaningful, something that means something to them. So I hope you enjoy that aspect of my show, that I'm passionate about art and relationships and realism. That means a lot to me. So tune in next week. Hope all is well. Stay safe. Stay sane. May God bless you. Have a good one.